How's it going today ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by and checking out this video. Ah, it's been a while. What can I say? It's been a while. Uh, I haven't been doing much videos this year. Uh, pretty much at all. I think if you go back through my videos, I think I've only done one or two the entire year of 2020. It has been a crazy year. Quick recap, everybody knows the pandemic. It's been crappy for everybody. Uh, whatever your thoughts are, um, if anybody's been affected, thoughts and prayers go with you. Oh, what else? Um, <laughs> 2020's just been awful. Uh, so where I live, we experienced what was called a derecho, or dereco. Uh, I'm not quite sure where that name uh, derives from, but it's pretty much a land-based hurricane. Here in the Midwest, or upper Midwest, we've experienced a lot of tornadoes, floods, blizzards. And now, I can uh, check off the list a derecho. Uh, so, let's see, about a month ago, we had straight line winds of over 100 miles an hour lasting up to an hour where I lived. So I apologize for the sound. Um, it's a rainy, crappy day today. I was gonna get out into the woods and do some videos, but as I said, listen. Pretty bad weather out there today. I'm just in my shop, so forgive any background noise. Uh, got the train in the background, the wind blowing my my. Uh, it's like a pole barn construction, so a lot of the metal is just tweaking and, and whatnot. Uh, but where was I? So talking about the derecho, dereco. So we experienced a lot of damage, uh, but not as bad as some. Uh, we lost some trees, a little bit of well, I should say minimal house damage. Uh, as I said, a lot of other people had it a lot worse. So thoughts and prayers go out to all those people. Thoughts and prayers go out to everybody that was affected by the uh, pandemic, the old COVID-19. But it's been a while since I've done a video and it's about to be fall. So a lot of things are gonna be changing. Kind of give you a recap of what I've been carrying this summer. Uh, I have been a little bit more minimal this year compared to most mainly just because of what I was doing, the atmosphere I was working in, and it was pretty hot. So, kind of show you down on the table, piece by piece, what I have on me. Obviously, these are on me, are on my person at all times, uh, but these are just some of the things I have been carrying. And I am gonna be doing a review on one of these things, um, but we'll get into that here in just a second. So, kind of the philosophy of what's going on is, in the summertime, it's a lot hotter. You know, you might be wearing short sandals. I, I, I'm usually not unless there's water involved. Um, but a lot more minimal stuff. So as I said, we experienced this uh, derecho storm and a lot of tree work. A lot of tree work, a lot of construction type projects were going on. So a lot of things that I was keeping in my pockets were relative to what I was doing. So obviously not out being in the woods and things like that mainly using chainsaws and power tools and things of that nature. So I did have experience, fortunately, unfortunately, of being an arborist back in my early 20s. So I was not necessarily obligated, but I felt it was kind of my duty to help the people that I could, you know, close friends and families. So there for like a few weeks, it was, I, I took a week off from work and pretty much ran a chainsaw working on my property. And then after that, it was just getting to everybody that we know, helping them clean up and kind of deal with the, the, the storm. Uh, so a lot of times what would be on my person um, was usually, you know, a T-tool for the chainsaw or a lot of times, almost all the time was my Leatherman and then a fixed blade or a uh, hatchet, you know, depending on what I was working on. If I'm running the chainsaw a day, usually there's a handkerchief, uh, my Leatherman and a pair of gloves, maybe some earplugs in my pockets. Uh, but yeah, I'll show you kind of my go-to EDC for the summer and then kind of transition into what I carry more now that it's almost fall. So hence the long sleeves. Uh, it's a chilly one today. So I'm still rocking the old iPhone 8. Uh, I think that's what it is. iPhone 8. It gets the job done. Definitely going to be in the market for a different uh, phone here in the future. So not to get into the nitty-gritty of everything, but I've always been a huge advocate of having a pocket knife. Still am. Um, still always have some knife in some shape or form on my person at all times. But lately, uh, I've been carrying this new uh, Benchmade. It's the 200 Puko. 
don't know if you can see that or else I'll show it in this camera over here. So this knife, I was kind of skeptical off it off the start, but the more I use it, the more I've actually EDC'd it. Um, I absolutely love this blade. Uh, it's about the perfect size, and I didn't bring it out to reference, but my uh, Benchmade Freak, when deployed, is actually larger than this. Um, but this knife here, it's a CPM 3V, so it's a good super steel, and it holds a really good edge, and I really like that rubberized handle. Uh, super ergonomic, super comfortable, uh, and like I said, it's a super steel, holds a tremendous edge. Uh, really do like it and I've been EDC in this a lot lately and it's got a pretty decent uh, leather sheath and on there I just have one of those uh, I think it's a light my fire uh, fire steel um, and that's just you know fastened on there with some uh, stretch cord but I'll do a full review on this knife I just haven't had the time to get out there and actually do it but I've had it for a couple months now and been using it almost exclusively for, as my EDC, except for when I'm at work. Um, but absolutely great little blade. So that's been my go-to knife. Um, as I said before, I know there's a lot of people out there that aren't big fans of carrying a Leatherman. Uh, I carried the Sidekick for a long time, but this past year I've been going to the Wave, and mine's the older Wave. Uh, it's not the Wave Plus, Plus or the newer one. But this thing here, in my pocket, I use it all the time. Um, I got the pel uh, pocket clip on there, so I actually do just carry it, uh, you know, just like a pocket knife. But the, the couple blades on there, the pliers, the screwdrivers, all that stuff. If you're a working man, uh, it's hard to live without a good Leatherman. So the Leatherman Wave, that's up next see if I can keep this stuff in frame here uh, and then honorable mention well here we'll do this first pretty easy my EDC light favorite light of all time is the S2R Baton 2 by Olight rechargeable pretty much every EDC video I've ever done has this light or the first uh, the first series on it can't be beat for the price best flashlight money can buy in my opinion so we got the knife, multi-tool, flashlight. Honorable mention is if I am doing a more streamlined, low profile, don't want to carry a lot of stuff, uh, I tend to throw this guy on my belt. And this is a small uh, little, little leather work, I guess you could call it, that I, I attempted. Um, my first try ever doing leather work and it turned out all right. Uh, it was originally designed to hold a Leatherman and a small flashlight but most of my Leathermans can't fit in there so I actually just keep the uh, Swiss Army Knife Victoria Knox and this is the Camper and just you know old school style uh, traditional Swiss Army Knife uh, Victoria Knox this one like I said is the Camper so it does have the saw blade on it which I really do like um, so that normally stays in there but this thing the older I get, the more I like this type of design. Either just throw it in your pocket or throw it on this belt, uh, little belt kit that I made uh, with a snap on it. But the good thing about the Swiss Army knife, especially if you got kids, you got the toothpick, you got the tweezers, you know, if you get a sliver, anything like that. As I said, if you're working around wood a lot, those tweezers are lifesavers. And I really do like the camper and it's fairly inexpensive. And if I can find links to all this stuff too, I'll throw it down in the description box just so you can price check everything. Um, but this is all stuff I use practically on a daily basis. Uh, obviously, except for the little leather thing. Uh, nice little belt clip on it, just clips on. So if I just want, you know, if I don't want a lot of stuff in my pockets, I'll just take this, clip it on my belt. And there I have my knife slash multi-tool and my flashlight. And this this is one of the little uh, O-lights. This one I've had for a while too, the uh, 3T EOS. I don't know if you can see that how the lighting is on this camera, but uh, let's see if I can get that to focus on there. Uh, great little uh, AAA flashlight. Really good. Fits in there just perfect. Moving on to the timepiece. I used to uh, 
I've had multiple Suntos and Garmin's and uh, G-Shock watches in the past, and I kind of just got rid of them. I did like the the Sunto Core, what was it the All Black? I really did like that one, uh, but then I started having problems with it, and I just didn't really trust it that much anymore. But you know, when we were in Colorado or Northeast Montana or down in the Appalachians and stuff, it is kind of nice having that uh, timepiece that you do have a somewhat accurate uh, GPS or compass and then also the uh, altimeter, barometric pressure, multiple time zones, so on and so forth. It is super handy, uh, but I sold them. Sold them all. Now if I do wear a watch, it's just a standard timepiece. Uh, this one here is just a Timex. Uh, not super expensive and I mean just classy. Just a classy little little watch, nothing too fancy. Uh, to the pens, I usually try to always have a pen in my pocket. Uh, I used to carry the Inksol, you know, Sharpies all the time too. Um, my two favorites that I carry that I would be upset if I lost are these two. Um, I, my favorite pens to write with are the, the Pilot G2 pens, but those are uh, disposable pens. These two I actually like and that I try to, these are the ones I never let the kids get a hold of. So the first one is just the bullet pen, it's a Fisher Space Pen, and this thing's super nice. Uh, small, uh, low profile, easy to drop in your pocket. Also if I'm doing something minimal uh, or dressing up, you know, weddings, funerals, things like that, it's like these that come with me. Uh, small blade, small flashlight, and this small little bullet pen and you're good to go. Always nice to have a writing tool. And then this one as well, I used to carry the tactical pens and stuff like that, and I switched to, this is a, uh, the Zebra or Zebra F701, and it's an all stainless steel construction. If you had to, you could use it as a tactical pen. Uh, good one to have uh, if you're flying. It's a good part of your EDC is to keep a good stainless steel pen or a tactical pen if you cannot carry a knife. Really good to have. Won't uh, get into this too much for most of you people with teenage relatives, you know what this is. Uh, former, former smoker here, so won't get into that. Oh, so my back right pocket is my billfold. My billfold, I still use this, uh, it's a Chums board short uh, wallet. Uh, I still tend to use it. I still hate the zippers, but it's very low profile. Extremely low profile. Um, and what I do like is the compartments, like the, the other wallets, the minimal wallets and stuff like that. I don't really like them because it does just stack all your stuff together and then you gotta, you know, go through a Rolodex to find your cards. So on here, I can slide these cards out, my go-to cards, and then I can still have you know, my ID and concealed carry, fishing license, all that stuff in here, and it's good to go. Low profile. Enjoy it, and it's one of those love-hate things. Haven't found the perfect wallet yet. So, if you know one, leave it down in the comments below. And my left back pocket is normally the spot for the handkerchief, or bandana. Um, lately, I've been carrying two different things. I have my uh, you know, for bugs and snot and wiping kids' face and uh, when I'm in the public restroom and I need to dry my hands, uh, this is my handkerchief. It's not big enough to call a bandana. Uh, this one's kind of nice. It is from the uh, from Malcolm over at the Hidden Woodsman. A uh, handy, little, handy little thing I got not too long ago. Well, actually, about a year or two ago. I do like it. And then the second is a, whatever you want to call this, a buff a uh, neck gaiter, a freaking fabric tube, but we're in the world of COVID, so uh, it does act as a bandana if I need it, but then, you know, if you got to go into a public place, ta-da. I think that's all I got to say about that. You know, a lot of states out there, it's a requirement, so it's nice to have something like this in your back pocket. And it's a multi-purpose, you know. Uh, instead of using just those disposable masks, uh, something like this, multi-purpose, good to have. All right, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, we can get into firearms. We talk about firearms all, all day, every day. 
Uh, lately, this has been my go-to, and I just keep it on a, go ahead and check. And this is my Glock 23 Gen 4, pretty much stock, uh, 40 cal, really like it. Keep it on uh, inside the waistband, appendix, uh, holster. And that's my concealed carry slash EDC. Uh, now that it's getting colder out and I can wear more articles of clothing, uh, a lot of times it's you know something smaller like the uh, my LCP or the PT111 uh, during the summer is usually my go-to EDC uh, concealed. So now that it's getting warmer, we can move up to more of a full size and not worry about printing too bad. Uh, so yeah. I think that is going to conclude this video. I think I've rambled on long enough. So if this is something you like, please give it a thumbs up uh, and hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already uh, and click the bell notification so that you're notified whenever we upload a new video. It could be in a week, it could be in six months or next year. Uh, but yeah, help me out, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, do all that jazz and Thanks for stopping by and checking out this video. Matt with Outside the Box. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Future and hold for another train. Hopefully you guys can notice too. I can't tell from here because my screen's that big. Uh, I got a couple different angles and some lights and my microphone and stuff set up. So I've been watching some tutorials on how to make this more entertaining or better for your eyes and your ear holes and stuff like that. So hopefully everything sounds good. Make sure that mic's on. So we'll wait and see. If it's not on, I'm gonna be so pissed. Plus hopefully these lights hang, hang hang up.